So we're going to start with a 12 inch terracotta pot. So you want to start with a little bit of water in a dish and then add just a small amount of white paint. You can use any white craft paint that you have. I'm using some chalk paint here. Then you're just going to stir that up and combine the paint and the water really well. You want to have a really runny consistency. Now I'm grabbing a rag and this is just an old t-shirt that I cut up and I'm going to dip this rag into the whitewash that I have there. Don't need much at all and just start rubbing it on the pot. I want this to look like it's weathered, like it's been outside for a while. So I'm going to rub back and forth quite a bit so I have this kind of distressed look. I want to use the same process on the lip of the pot as well and the inside ring. Sometimes on a planter, depending on what's in it, you can see that inside ring of the pot. So this makes sure everything is covered. What I like about this finish is you don't need to seal this or anything. The terracotta can still be porous so water can go in and out and it's not going to affect that whitewash finish on the outside of your pot. Once the paint is dry, it's time to turn this into a planter. So I have a small plastic disposable pot here that I want to put in the center of this. And I've got some stones on the bottom. I want to raise this up so it's almost level with the clay pot. The idea is that we're going to plant around the outside and add a lighting element to the middle. So to create the middle, I'm just going to take some stones and fill up that uh, plastic pot in the middle. Then to top it off, I'm just going to add a little bit of gravel so that I have a nice flat surface. With soil and I'm going to plant some beautiful spring flowers in here. But for now, I'm going to use some faux flowers. So I'm just taking a selection of nice faux flowers and I've cut the stems and I'm just going to poke them in and around here so it's nice and full. The outside is all covered with flowers and on the middle I've got this nice flat surface. So I am going to put a vase here. This is one of those vases that came with a flower arrangement. It's going to work perfect for this. It kind of looks like a hurricane you might put on top of an oil lamp. So I'm going to set this there, make sure it sits nice and flat on that gravel. And then to the middle, I'm going to add a tall battery powered votive. This is going to give off a beautiful glow. The whole candle actually glows. I'm going to pop that inside and I have a spring porch planter. Right now we have our faux flowers in it, but this is going to look great in the spring when I'm able to switch these out for real plants. I hope this inspired you and showed you how to wash, whitewash a pot and create a spring planter for your home. This project calls for coffee filters. I used four cups of water and 20 drops of food coloring. I used red food coloring. You're going to want to take your coffee filters and kind of um, turn them the wrong way. They'll be easier to separate. You're going to want to separate them one at a time and just put them right down in the water. Now I've put on gloves because the food coloring will color your hands. And you can put as many as you want, uh, 10, 15 in at a time. And uh, the longer you let them soak, the more color they will pick up. Um, I want these to be pink, so I'm not leaving them real long. Uh, maybe two, three minutes is all that's needed. So I'm gonna push these down into the water, like so, and leave them for just a couple minutes. When you take your coffee filters out of the water, you're gonna want to squeeze them over a bowl and squeeze as much of the water out as you can. And then you can unfold them like so. And there's lots of different ways to dry them, but one of the quickest is to just put some paper towels out and then take your coffee filters and separate them one at a time, spread them out, and just put them right down on the paper towels. And they'll start to absorb any of the moisture that is still in them. And then you can layer them and you can reuse the paper towels. You'll see this already has some pink on it. And the same thing, just press down so this absorbs any of the water from the top of those filters and put on two more. Just spread them out. Another layer of paper towels. But by squeezing them at the beginning, you won't have um, um, then be really wet. I know some people like to uh, put theirs in the oven, but I just don't even think that's necessary. 
This has them dry in no time at all. After all of your coffee filters have dried, you're going to pick out uh, six of your coffee filters. And what we're going to do is you're going to fold each one in half. <clears throat> so it kind of looks like a taco. Then you're going to fold it in half again. Fold it in half a third time. And then fold it in half a fourth time. So it will look something like this. Then you're going to take your scissors and cut. You just want to cut a little curve. This does not have to be exact. Remember, um, in nature, flowers are not all exact. They don't all aren't all exactly the same. I wanted that to be a little more curved, so I added it, took off a little more. And it's going to kind of look like an ice cream cone. Then what we're going to do is we're going to unfold it and cut it in half. This is back to the taco shape, but with a little flare. And then we're going to take each one of these apart and cut them in half. So we've got pieces that look like this. You will have four of those pieces from each one of your coffee filters. Like I said, you're going to do that with six of your coffee filters. When you're all finished folding and cutting, you're going to have 24 pieces that look just like this. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of a paper wrapped or cloth wrapped um, floral wire. You don't want just the plain. We're going to take our first piece and low temp glue gun. You want low temperature right there. Um, because you're going to be putting your hand on here a lot and I don't want you to get burned. So we're going to put a little bead of glue right there and we're going to lay that stem right down on it. And then you're just going to wrap that and see with it being low temperature, it's not going to burn me. And we're going to go and wrap this as tightly as we can right around our first petal. Just roll, 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 roll when you get to here. You're just going to put a little bit of glue right there. And again, using low temp, shouldn't burn you at all. And that is going to be the center of your rose right there, just like that. We're gonna do the same thing again. Put a little bead of hot glue right there. We're gonna put this down right on top of it, just a little bit higher. You want each petal to be up a little bit higher. Press that down and do the same thing. Roll, 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 roll. Nice and snug. When you get to the end, a little bit of glue to hold that. Now for our third one, we're not going to do it quite as tight. I'm gonna do the same thing. A little bead of glue and a little bit higher than our previous ones. Now this time, we don't wanna roll it quite so tight. So see, I'm rolling it just a little bit looser. You get to this point, instead of just a little bit holding this part, you're going to want to put a bead of glue all the way along there because it's going to be wrapped more loosely. And I like to squeeze the bottom like so. And about at this point, when I'm about Oh, maybe, maybe about halfway through, I'm going to take some floral wire or floral tape and wrap it around to hold the bottom of my rose really tightly. Well, if you haven't worked with floral tape, floral tape does not stick to anything. It sticks to itself and you kind of pull it down. And we're going to, that's the first one we're going to have on our stem. And see, if you wanted to just use a rose bud in your arrangement, you wouldn't have to add much more and you would be all set. But we're going to continue to make a nice full rose. You don't wanna squeeze this too tight and um, squeeze your rose too tight at this point either. And now this is not even enough to go around over all of the opening. So we're just going to continue to overlap them. A 
You just want to make sure and continue to squeeze the bottom tight. If at any time you want, you can go ahead and add another layer of your floral tape. Squeeze that bottom together really tightly. We've used all 24 of our individual petals. If you want, you can glue these down. Another alternative, you can take a pencil, or in this case, I'm gonna take a mini glue stick, and you can roll some of these outside petals as if the rose is opening up. So you can just take this right around your rose with your fingers and just roll around, roll the coffee filter right around those. And you just wanna do that with um, your outer petals. Don't wanna go all inside. And if you don't like this, out like this, again, just a little, little hot glue, stick it right down, hold it for a second and it'll stick. And you can get creative, you can, you can fluff it out a little bit if you'd like. Just like so. And there you have it, how to make a coffee filter rose.